Hello and welcome to Mickeyology, where we take Disney movies a little too seriously in an ongoing attempt to trace them back to their historical settings. I'm Austin Rathall, professional history teacher, amateur historian, and lifelong Disney devotee. On this channel, we like to focus more on the history behind a movie rather than the historical inaccuracies within it. I would rather spend my time focusing on the ways that a movie fits into a historical time period rather than pointing out the historical mistakes in a movie. Well, today's movie is going to put that to the ultimate test because we're talking about a film that has all the historical accuracy of a painting of George Washington riding on a dinosaur. Still, we are going to do our best to place Mulan in as accurate a historical setting as possible. But before we look at the clues, I would like to speak directly to the folks at Disney. Hi, Disney. It's me. Big fan, by the way. Um, I've, I've been researching your movie Mulan, and great movie, love it. But I've been trying to like make it fit and see like where in history it works, considering the stuff that you put in the movie. And it doesn't really fit anywhere. There's not a lot that's accurate that's going on in this movie. Um, my brain hurts, and I've had to do a lot of mental gymnastics just to make this thing fit anywhere. Just wanted to let you know. But anyways, big fan. Oh, also, make National Treasure 3 already. Don't keep teasing me. Clue number one, design. As they do with many of their movies, the people at Disney put a fair amount of research into making Mulan. A team of animators visited China prior to making the film, and Disney artist Chen Yi Cheng brought his own personal expertise to the project. Cheng drew inspiration from two Chinese dynasties in particular, the Han and the Tang. The art from the Han Dynasty is more primitive, Chang said, and we liked that direct approach a lot. The Tang Dynasty provided us with a more flowery feel, a lot of curvy motifs. Also, a lot of sculptures, figurines, and paintings are available for reference from the Tang Dynasty, so their recurring design elements became the main resource for the style that was developed for Mulan. The film's artists drew inspiration in particular from Tang fashion, which they used to design Mulan's costumes. During the song, A Girl Worth Fighting For, we see Shang's battalion march past an enormous statue of the Buddha. This statue is based on the sculptures found at the Longmen Caves in Luoyang, China. Those sculptures were also made during the Tang Dynasty. So, when were these dynasties in power? Well, the Han Dynasty lasted from about 206 BC to the year AD 220. The Tang Dynasty came later, lasting from the year 618 to the year 906. Considering all the Tang Dynasty elements that we see in the film, we can therefore conclude that Mulan must take place sometime during or after the 7th century AD. However, if Mulan does take place in the Tang Dynasty, then there is a glaring problem with the movie. It's the movie's villains. By this time, they should all be dead. Clue number two, Huns. Obviously, the villains of Mulan are the Huns, but their presence in the movie is pretty confusing because the Huns didn't last that long as an empire and they didn't have that much interaction with China. The movie does get some things right about the Huns. Like the people in the film, the real Huns were these fierce nomadic warriors who went into battle on horseback. But they emerged in the 4th century AD, long before the Tang Dynasty, and they are most famous for conquering parts of Europe, not China. The most famous Hun, Attila the Hun, 
united his people into this fierce fighting force, and they almost conquered Rome. But then Attila suddenly died, and by 459 his empire has pretty much dissolved and there's no more Huns around. So it's very unlikely that Mulan or any other Chinese soldier would ever face the Huns in battle. However, the movie gives us a few intriguing hints that suggest that these so-called Huns aren't actually Huns per se. Granted, the characters in the movie, including Sean Yu himself, refer to these guys as Huns, but although the Huns never fought with China, really, there is another people that did, and many scholars believe that that group may have been the direct ancestor of the Hun civilization. This group is called the Xiongnu. You might notice that the name Xiongnu sounds very similar to the name of the lead Hun in Mulan, Shan Yu. And in fact, the leader of the Xiongnu was called the Shan Yu, which means that Shan Yu in Mulan may be a title rather than a name. In the 3rd century BC, the Xiongnu united behind their Shan Yu and attacked China. That motivated the emperor of the Qin dynasty to build a wall to keep the barbarians out. Now this matches perfectly with the backstory of Mulan. The emperor will stop you. Stop me? He invited me. <laughs> By building his wall, he challenged my strength. Well, I'm here to play his game. What's even more interesting is that some ancient peoples, like the Greeks, referred to the Xiongnu and the Huns with the same name. That means that the Chinese army in Mulan might actually be fighting the Xiongnu, not the people that we modern folks call Huns. However, the Xiongnu lived even earlier than the Huns, long before the Tang Dynasty, and they lived centuries before the invention of cannons, which means that logically, Mulan couldn't have both fought off a Xiongnu horde and used a cannon to drop an avalanche on them. Clue number three, technology. While Mulan and her fellow soldiers use a lot of older looking weapons like swords and bows and arrows, they also use gunpowder rockets. Now, gunpowder was invented in China, and it wasn't used in Chinese warfare until about the 13th century. So, if Mulan takes place after the invention of gunpowder weapons, then historically speaking, Mulan couldn't be fighting the Xiongnu or the Huns, because both of those groups were long gone by the time the Chinese army was using rockets. <laughs> In the movie, the Chinese government calls for one man in every family to serve in the Imperial Army. This includes Mulan's father, even though he is obviously old and in poor health. Because Fazu has no son to go in his stead, he must report to the military, serve in the war, and face almost certain death. However, a real man in Fazu's position in ancient China might not have had that problem. The law codes of the Ming and Qing dynasties state, quote, If a person of military status is old, disabled, crippled, or ill, he may go to his superior in command and lay the facts before him. If the facts are verified to be true, he will be relieved from his military status, close quote. The same law codes also state that, quote, If a soldier is ordered to go to war, and a young and strong relation who lives in the same household serves for him voluntarily, this is permitted." Close quote. So depending on the time period that the movie takes place, Fa Zhu probably shouldn't have had to worry about getting drafted. Even if he was too proud to admit that he could no longer serve, Mulan might have been able to simply legally volunteer to go for him. Now, of course, Mulan was a girl, but there was even a tradition of women serving in ancient Chinese militaries. At least 19 women warriors served as commanders, not just soldiers, commanders in ancient Chinese militaries. One of them even declared herself emperor for a short time. 
Plus, there were plenty of fictional female warriors in Chinese legends. Mulan was the most famous of all of these, and still is. And even in the original Mulan poem, not many people seem to care that she's a girl in the army. In the poem, she finds out that the emperor has drafted her father. So she goes, she volunteers and fights in his stead, and then returns home. When her fellow soldiers find out she's a woman, they're a little surprised, but they don't threaten to punish her in any way. So while in the movie, Mulan is masquerading as a man to save her father, a real woman in Mulan's position might not have had that problem in the first place. Clue number four, architecture. The climax of Mulan takes place at the emperor's palace in the imperial city. Now, if you're familiar with Chinese landmarks, you'll probably recognize this as the Forbidden City in Peking. You might even recognize that lion statue that Shang and the guys use as a battering ram when they're going to rescue the emperor. The real Forbidden City was the brainchild of the Yang Le Emperor, who was an emperor of the Ming Dynasty, reigning from 1402 to 1424. Animators also designed the gate to the imperial city after a gate they saw at the Zhayu Fort, which also dates to the Ming Dynasty. Therefore, Mulan might actually take place much later than the Tang Dynasty, during the Ming Dynasty. Now the Ming Dynasty is very significant in Chinese history because it was the Ming that created what we now know as the Great Wall of China. Previous dynasties had built walls, but they usually consisted of mounds of earth and heaps of stone, not the famous brick and mortar structure people visit today. In the late 1400s, the Ming expanded the Great Wall to protect their northern border from invaders. Sound familiar? Your Majesty, the Huns have crossed our northern border. Impossible! No one can get through the Great Wall! Those invaders included the Mongols. Who were the Mongols? Oh, just a fierce, nomadic warrior people who attacked the Chinese on horseback. Seriously, Disney, why didn't you just name these guys Mongols? It would have made everything so much more accurate. What's interesting, though, is we do know that the Mongols exist in the world of Mulan. Because in Mulan 2, the Emperor says, Mongol forces are moving closer. The threat of attack is growing. So perhaps the people called Huns in Mulan aren't actually Huns, but they're some kind of Mongol group. Yes, I know that's a stretch, but give me a break. I mean, this movie has 5th century villains, 8th century fashion, and 13th century technology. I mean... Work with me. Based on the movie's technology, architecture, and design, I am dating Mulan to the Ming Dynasty in ancient China, circa 1500 CE. So, what do you think of my conclusions? Do you think that the Ming Dynasty is the most probable placement for Mulan? Do you think there's another dynasty that fits Mulan better? Are you going to see the live action Mulan and do you think they'll do a better job with historical accuracy? Let me know in the comments and also tell me what Disney movie you would like me to analyze next. As always, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.